Hello everyone, this is Shadow Physiology and today we'll talk about the transport of carbon dioxide in the blood. Carbon dioxide is continuously produced by cells in the course of their metabolism. Then it is excreted from the body by the lung. CO2 is transported from the tissues to the lungs by the blood. Only a small amount of carbon dioxide is carried in the dissolved state, while the main part of CO2 is chemically bound. The chart depicts the percentage of different forms of CO2 transport. The yellow subbar designates the carbamina compound, which is formed when carbon dioxide reacts with them in a group of proteins. 5% of CO2 is carried in this form. The largest portion of carbon dioxide, namely 90%, is carried as bicarbonate ions. Finally, 5% of CO2 is transported in the dissolved state. The left bar represents the amount of CO2 in the arterial blood, and the right one in the venous blood. Each deciliter of the arterial blood contains 48 milliliters of carbon dioxide, and each deciliter of the venous 52 milliliters. The difference between the two values, i.e. 4 milliliters, is the so-called arteriovenous difference. In other words, in the course of systemic circulation, each deciliter of blood takes up 4 milliliters of CO2 from tissues. We will call this amount of carbon dioxide incremental volume. The incremental volume of CO2 is also transported in the three forms described above. However, their percentage is very different. Namely, the carbamine compound makes up 21% of the incremental amount, bicarbonate iron 69%, and dissolved CO2 10%. Let's consider transformation of carbon dioxide as it enters in the blood in systemic capillaries. In the picture, we can see some cells, a capillary, and an erythrocyte. CO2 produced by cells moves to the interstitium. After that, it enters the blood through the capillary walls. Of the total amount of the produced carbon dioxide, 11% remains in the plasma. A very insignificant portion of CO2 forms carbamina compounds with amino groups of plasma proteins. But this portion is virtually negligible, less than 1%. 6% of carbon dioxide is transported in the dissolved state. Another portion of CO2 reacts with water to form carbonic acid, which later dissociates into hydrogen and bicarbonate ions. However, in plasma this reaction is very slow. Only 5% of CO2 is transported in such form. The main part of carbon dioxide, namely 89%, enters erythrocytes via AQP1 channel. 4% of CO2 remains dissolved in the erythrocyte cytoplasm. 21% of carbon dioxide binds to them in a group of the hemoglobin to form carbamina compound. The hemoglobin that binds CO2 is called carbamina hemoglobin. Each hemoglobin molecule has four amino groups, which can bind CO2, two in the alpha chain and two in the beta chain. When binding to the amino group, carbon dioxide displaces its hydrogen ions. Once dissociated from the amino groups, the H plus ions combine with the protein chains of the hemoglobin molecule. Thus, hemoglobin acts as a buffer to prevent pH fluctuations. It should be noted. The deoxyhemoglobin is a better buffer compared to oxyhemoglobin. The question arises, why CO2 has almost no reaction with the plasma protein, whereas carbamina compounds make up about a fifth of all transported carbon dioxide? It happens for a variety of causes. First, the concentration of hemoglobin inside erythrocytes is much higher than that of plasma proteins. Second, Hemoglobin forms carbamina compounds easier compared to plasma proteins. Moreover, deoxyhemoglobin has a higher CO2 binding affinity than oxyhemoglobin. It should be noted that binding of carbon dioxide and hydrogen ions leads to the decreased affinity of hemoglobin to the oxygen. This phenomenon is called CO2 and H plus Bohr effects respectively. Because of these effects, O2 molecules dissociate from hemoglobin in systemic capillaries more easily. The main part, 64% of carbon dioxide, is transported as bicarbonate ions, 
they are formed quickly and effectively inside the erythrocyte due to the presence of carbonic anhydrase in the cytoplasm. This enzyme catalyzes the interconversion of CO2 and carbonic acid. Plasma does not contain carbonic anhydrase. That is why, as it has already been mentioned, HCO3- forms slowly and its amount is insignificant. Bicarbonate ions leave the erythrocyte for plasma through the anion exchanger. It is also called chloride bicarbonate exchanger in exchange for a chloride ion. The membrane of each erythrocyte contains about a million copies of this exchanger. Such movement of the chloride ions into the erythrocyte is referred to as the chloride shift. The accumulation of CO2 in erythrocytes leads to an increase of intercellular osmolarity. Since each molecule of carbon dioxide converted into a bicarbonate ion produces an osmotically active particle. Both HCO3- and Cl-, which enter red blood cells in exchange for bicarbonate ions, are osmotically active. So, the osmolarity of red blood cell cytoplasm increases. That is why water moves into the erythrocyte, and this, in turn, leads to its swelling. Thus, the mean corpuscular volume of red blood cells in venous blood is slightly larger compared to the arterial. In the pulmonary capillaries, all described processes are reversed. In the picture, we can see alveolar sites, a capillary, and an erythrocyte. Once moved to the blood from the alveolar gas, oxygen enters erythrocyte and binds to hemoglobin to form oxyhemoglobin. Since oxygenated hemoglobin has a lower affinity for CO2, the carbomino compounds dissociate and CO2 is released into the cytoplasm. In addition, oxyhemoglobin is a weaker buffer as compared to deoxyhemoglobin, so hydrogen ions detach from it. Bicarbonate ions enter erythrocytes through the anion exchanger in exchange for chloride ions. In the cytoplasm, HCO3- dissociates into the hydroxide ion and carbon dioxide. This reaction is also catalyzed by the carbonic anhydrase. The resulting CO2 leaves red blood cells via AQP1, then moves to alveolar sites through the interstitium and is evacuated into alveolar gas. In fact, carbon dioxide transport can be reduced to two sequential chemical reactions. In the systemic capillaries, these reactions occur in one direction, in the pulmonary capillaries, in the other. In systemic capillaries, the equilibrium of the reactions shifts to the right, as the concentration of their products decreases. Bicarbonate ions are removed from red blood cells, and hydrogen ions bind to hemoglobin. Also, the amount of CO2 increases, since it enters the plasma. In the pulmonary capillaries, the equilibrium of the reaction shifts to the left, and the concentration of H plus and HCO3- increases. The hydrogen ion detached from hemoglobin, and the bicarbonate ion enters red blood cell from plasma. In contrast, the amount of CO2 decreases as it moves into the alveolar gas. Thank you very much for watching.